I'm here in the annex neighborhood of the city of Toronto, and we're heading off to a bike shop called Curbside Cycle, and we're gonna borrow a Brompton for a weekend in Montreal. So let's go. I'm your host, Kevin, from the YouTube channel Kevin Goes, and Curbside Cycle and I have joined together to show you the advantages of owning a Brompton folding bike and bringing it onto the Via Rail train from downtown Toronto to Montreal, Quebec. So sit back, relax, and enter the fold. This is Curbside Cycle at 412 Bloor Street in Toronto. They have been around for 30 years selling Dutch bikes, cargo bikes, electric bikes, and for what you're here for, the amazing Brompton Bicycle. They also sell lots of parts and accessories for your brand new Brompton. And this one in front of us here is the Brompton Sea line Explorer. This is a six speed bicycle. This includes dynamo lighting so you do not have to worry about your lighting needs. And if you're someone like me, six foot, this comes with the telescopic seat post. This is gonna be great when we put this into the transit travel bag as Via Rail has some pretty stringent baggage requirements. That one is 62 linear inches for your bag. Unfortunately, the transit travel bag does exceed that, but if you take out the top portion, you'll be under that limit. But most importantly is the weight of the bag and the bike. They actually do weigh your bag and this has to remain under 50 pounds. So you can't get away with just jamming all your clothes in the transit travel bag, don't do that. They'll come around with a scale and you'll either get dinged with additional charges or they might not let you take it on to the train. Sadly, there will be a lot of rain in Montreal this weekend. So I'm taking the amazing roll top waterproof burrow bag. So we've got everything need for our trip to Montreal. We have our transit travel bag, our waterproof roll top borrow bag. Thank you so much to Curbside Cycle for making this happen. I think we're ready to take the Via train. Let's go. It's train time. What would a train ride be without a sandwich and maybe some snacks? We got some Miss Vicky's, wasabi snacks, maple leaf cookies, and some cupcakes because they were out of Dunkaroos. Nothing fancy here, just some ham, cheese, tomato, white bread, even got the brown bag. Early morning Toronto is a thing of beauty. It's about 5 a.m. here and I'm heading down to Union Station, downtown Toronto. In a previous episode, I took you on a bike share bike down to Billy Bishop Airport. But this time I get to do it in style and on the comfort of a Brompton. One of my favorite parts about riding in the early morning is the lack of cars. And my favorite sight and sound of the night is the streetcar. Such an iconic feature of Toronto, and if you're ever here, check it out. And once you arrive to the Toronto's Union Station, you are warm welcomed by its bright lights and the famous CN Tower. Toronto's Union Station is Canada's busiest multimodal passenger transportation hub. It features Via Rail, Go Transit, and connections to the TTC. And when you enter through the front street entrance, you are greeted by the Great Hall. If you are coming by bike, make sure to get here early. I was about 30 minutes before boarding time. And this is where the magic happens. Simply fold out the panels of the transit travel bag, move the straps out of the way, grab your Brompton, and place it in the bag. Be sure to use the straps so that you can tighten down the Brompton to the bag. You wouldn't want this thing to move around. And as a pro tip, if you have a telescopic seat post, remove the saddle portion. As Via Rail is pretty stringent with their baggage requirements. You also have just enough room to put in the Brompton waterproof burrow bag. And don't forget to put the saddle in the bag. One of the great perks of having this as a soft case, the dimensions are a bit flexible. So you do get within the 62 linear inches on Via Rail. Big thing though, keep it under 50 pounds.
The waiting area in the Via Concourse isn't anything to really look at. However, we were just getting ready to board, and the lineups have started to form. Since I didn't have a camera person, it was a bit hard to show going up the escalator. But once you're on the train, there's plenty of room for your Brompton in the luggage area, and then you can head to your seat and relax. So no idea if you can hear me. Uh, I'm standing right next to one of the uh, Via Train locomotives that I'm about to embark on to Montreal. And I've got a really great, really great time for you guys uh, taking a Brompton folding bike. We're gonna have a nice trip. It's about five hours long. And uh, we'll see how these old cars do. All right, let's get on the train. And now that I have my hands free, I can show you that there is no level boarding here at Toronto Union Station. However, the coach cars are wide, they have plenty of storage, and feature incredibly comfortable seats. And before you knew it, we were off. And within about 20 minutes, the coffee cart came around. And if you're expecting to do some work, the Wi-Fi is pretty bad. So you might be better off trying to sit back and relax and enjoying the view. Once we got to Kingston, I dug out that sandwich and was chowing down. Oh, and what would a train ride be without a bathroom tour? Pretty small, but had plenty of hot water and great lighting. Embarking on a journey aboard the Via Rail train where time slows down and the world outside blurs into a picturesque daydream. For five long hours, let the rhythmic clatter of the tracks be your lullaby as you escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life, immersing yourself in the timeless romance of the rolling landscape outside of your window. While Via Rail's Toronto to Montreal route isn't the most scenic, depending on which side of the train you sit, you get beautiful views of Ontario and Quebec farmland, or views of Lake Ontario and St. Lawrence River. Your attention please will be arriving at Montreal Central Station, our final destination, in a few moments. And as we begin to creep in Montreal, we get to see the beautiful skyline approach, old rail bridges, and brand new transit infrastructure known as the REM. While much of the skyline of Montreal is now new buildings, you do get to see glimpses of old Montreal. After five long hours, welcome to Gare Centrale, Montreal. My immediate favorite feature of this station was the level boarding, thus not having to carry the Brompton bag. Wow, it's been uh, eight years since I've been here and uh, wow, this is so exciting. Uh, glad to be back in Montreal. Last time I was here as a broke bike messenger. Uh, yeah, still kind of broke, but so let's get this bike unpacked and get onto the streets. Welcome to Montreal. We walked about half a block from Gare Central to this nice little park called Dorchester Square. It was now time to unpack the bike and hit the streets of Montreal. It's about 1 p.m. here, and my Airbnb check-in isn't for another few hours. So we're gonna hit the streets and set our sights for Montreal. And one of the things you might notice right away is the amazing bike infrastructure. And that should come to no surprise. Montreal is voted as one of the best places to bike in. With every turn you make, there's just another bike lane. So uh, taking a little break here, uh, looking at the map, 
I'm not from, I've, I've been here once before. Uh, Park Avenue and uh, Park and Pine. I, I don't know. This is like the base, getting pretty much the base of the mountain, I believe. I am severely out of shape compared to the last time. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get into it, but uh, God, it's a lot hillier than in Toronto, and uh, you know it's good for me. Um, get in shape, stay healthy, live long. Yeah. I should also mention that it was 20 degrees. I'm overdressed, and I have a ton of things on this bike, as well as my back, but. To recharge, I'm heading to Edmonds on Rachel Street, a cute little cafe. I should also say, bring a bike lock. You're not gonna wanna fold this every single time that you go into a little tiny cafe like this. Edmonds also sold great little pastries and little personal pizza pies. Finally got into the Airbnb after three hours, and it's a stunning place as I saw on the internet. But the trip is not about the Airbnb. And of course you get boutine at 1 a.m. in the morning. 10 out of 10. Let's get it in. That's one of Montreal's famous bagel spots. I don't think it's gonna be worth standing in line in the rain to get one of these bagels when you can just about get them at most grocery stores now. Uh, one second, I think this guy wants to park. So, that's all right. There's so many other good places to try. So, since that bagel shop was kind of a dud, uh, just in terms of, I don't want to wait in line. Uh, I'd rather just keep, keep on going. We're gonna try out uh, Sophie Sucre, I, this is probably not how you even say it, but we're going to check it out. It is at 3770 St. Laurent Boulevard here in Montreal. So, should take a few minutes to get there. No judgment zone here. It's cold and rainy. I'm going to go the wrong way. That's up for you to decide in real life if you want to do that. So the spot we're going to is Sophie Sucre. It is a vegan bakery located at 3770 St. Laurent Boulevard. I am by no means a vegan person, but I'm a sucker for vegan food, especially if it's good. And with 10 years under their belt, I'm gonna trust it. So I am absolutely drenched. Uh, we are not going to the a and because we have that everywhere. Uh, this is, this is where my tip, bike is completely wet. I don't want to take this in anywhere with me. It's such a hassle. I want to just grab my, my food and go. So make sure to have a lock and take this with you too. Because uh, that just slides right out of the post. So I'm just going to lock up and get some food. Well, this is one of those Instagram tries. It looks great. I think this place has been here for a long time. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. This place is called Sophie. And the food looks fantastic and they are all vegan. Everything you see here is from classic baked goods to French pastries. Every single thing is made in-house and 100% plant-based. They treat their employees very well. And this is a very favorite spot here in the plateau. So whether you're a vegan or not, I would highly recommend this place just based on the friendliness and quality of their food. One unfortunate aspect of their place is there's no seating. So took it to go, riding up Duluth Avenue through Park La Fontaine. 
going through the edge of the park, up Rachel Street, and eventually to a buddy's house off Fulham Street. And if you've noticed the theme of this city yet, bike lanes everywhere. And it was time to chow down on my little vegan sandwich. Sorry about the presentation, but it was absolutely delicious and hit the spot. The next stop on our journey was heading to St. Ellen's Island. It was at this moment that the rain was clearing up a bit, but that's very short-lived. Either way, it was still a beautiful day to ride. And if you're prepared with your rain jacket, fenders on your bike, there should be no problems at all. And one of the coolest features of this ride, we're heading to the Jacques Cartier Bridge. This bridge carries across pedestrians, of course, your automobile, and bikes. This connects Montreal with Longueuil, Quebec, across the St. Lawrence River. And the most beautiful thing about being on a bike, you can make stops along the way and admire the skyline of Montreal. One thing I really wish I had on this rainy day were earplugs. Believe it or not, you can suffer from hearing damage from the sound of the rain and tires. And at the base of the bridge, they have a beautiful plaque commemorating the construction. This turret you also see is part of the pavilion that has never been used. It's located beneath the bridge and was constructed at the same time and is an excellent example of a rare Art Deco building in Montreal. And another unique feature of the bridge are the ramps down to Parc Jean Drapeau. So despite it being really, really gross out, uh, the nice thing about the Brompton, it has the full fenders and you can also get the waterproof burrow bag, which saves pretty much all of my equipment. It's actually just the camera and a jacket. But we made it to the biosphere and that's not to be confused with the biodome. The biodome is uh, closer to Olympic Stadium uh, this is an, a museum. Uh, There's a whole museum you can go into inside of this sphere. This was built back for the Montreal Expo uh, four or five decades now ago, and it's still here. So we're going to go check it out. Like Again, again make sure you have your lock for this bike because you don't want to drag this inside. I made a whole video about locking up your Brompton. Uh, I have no idea if that aired on the Instagram, but... Um, if it hasn't, I'll make sure to maybe throw that in here as well. One of the big benefits of owning a Brompton is you can bring it indoors pretty much anywhere. But sometimes you can't, or you just can't bother with the stairs. Well, luckily Abus makes this amazing folding lock called the Bordeaux. And it fits conveniently on your top tube. Another great feature of it being so small that you won't knock into it with your feet like you would with a big bulky U lock. So now that we told you how great the Bordeaux is, let's show you how to lock up to a city bike rack. Our recommended method would be to fold your bike halfway, unclip the Bordeaux out of its holster, and unlock it so it fully extends. Feed the lock through the triangle and around the bike rack. You might have to raise the rear wheel a bit because this rack was a little high. Once you're through the wheel, connect the lock into the shackle once more and turn the key to lock. So I shared that because I absolutely beefed it on the lockup. I missed the main frame in this. Nothing bad happened, but bad practice. And maybe Brompton for people who carry tools. Let's maybe get like a Allen key situation here. Like I know Brompton, fold it, bring it inside with you. But again, it's just not gonna be plausible for some places. These things have loops, let's jam that in there. Let's go. The Montreal Biosphere is an iconic environmental museum located in Parc Jean Drapeau. It was originally constructed as the United States Pavilion for the 1967 World Expo. The geodesic dome design was created by renowned architect Buckminster Fuller. After the expo, the structure was repurposed into an interactive environmental museum. 
However, in 1976, it suffered a major fire causing significant damage. However, it being so iconic, it was rebuilt and reopened in 1995. During my visit, they have a very special exhibition based around the artist Jean-Paul Ripollet. Ripollet had a big fascination in wild geese and their migratory patterns, and that's exactly what this was all about. They also showcase the human effects of the St. Lawrence River, which the biosphere is located on. It is good to note that you should definitely check out the Biosphere website as their exhibitions do change. And one of the most unique features of this place is you can go up to the fifth floor observation that gives you an unparalleled view of downtown Montreal and the St. Lawrence River. That was the Biosphere. It's about 20 bucks. You know, I spent about 30 minutes in there. I think it's, I think it was worth it. You know, considering, you know, dollar to, to minute kind of thing. Really unique, really beautiful space too. Despite the heavy rain coming, I was determined to keep on riding and seeing some more sights of St. Helen and Notre Dame Island. And a quick shout out to the waterproof Brompton Burrow roll top bag. Without it, all my things would have been soaked. Notre Dame Island is home to the Montreal Casino, which was also part of Expo 67. And is also home to the Montreal F1 racing track, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And when there's no racing going on, it's open to cyclists. However, it's closed to renovations until April 2024. Anyway, Ellie, thank you for the recommendation. Unfortunately, it's just really sloppy out here. Really, if you see it, uh, see this video. Love you. Thank you for the recommendation. I am definitely going to come back to see more of the Formula One track. Hopefully, it'll be reopened. Uh, I think they are uh, resurfacing it. So, on a less rainy day, I'm going to come back and try this out because this looks absolutely fabulous. But, uh, Let's get to the course more start. At the time of filming this, I decided to take the metro back so I could get home very quickly as I thought I lost my wallet. Luckily, I did end up finding my wallet on the floor of my Airbnb, but this was a blessing in disguise as I got to experience the metro with a folding bike. And that is one of the biggest features of being able to fold it up if it gets really crowded or it's rush hour. And generally, bikes aren't allowed during that time. While I didn't need to fold up for the first part of the journey, once I got to the orange line, it was a definite. It was absolutely packed as you can see. However, its small footprint, even smaller than a baby carriage, was no problem and in nobody's way. So, that's uh, another, another point to Brompton. After a quick shower, it was time to head down to Fufun Electric. I'll let you look that one up yourself. This is where registration for La Course de More starts. However, we do not start here. We do go for a little bike ride to a little square. With registration, you are allowed to place in the race, and you also have an opportunity to buy a limited edition t-shirt. And one of my absolute favorite things about an alley cat is seeing the variety of bikes that come out. You get track bikes, mountain bikes, road bikes, all sorts of them. And in my case, I had the Brompton. Those of you that never did it, Alley Cats, you're, get, you're gonna get a paper with a ton of addresses on it. And I missed it in real life, but La Course de More, Ride of the Dead, is a bike race commemorated to fallen bike messengers from the past. It is also known to being one of the toughest Alley Cats that you can do. Historically, it's been cold, rainy, even snow. It's also about a four hour race and takes you all across Montreal. And those that do finish, they are left completely exhausted, but victorious. This race isn't for everyone, but it's worthwhile to check out to see some parts of the city that you will never ever see on a normal day. 
Uh, thank you, Vince, for this recommendation years and years ago. Finally, finally made it out. Uh, I am soggy as hell, but with the best company. Uh, that's all for now. I'll probably get some scenes with the after party. See you there. After parties for alley cats are generally hosted in pretty unique spaces, and this one did not let down. This is Rice Cyborg, and they are known for reuse of devices, components, and materials. For this after party, they had a little makeshift bar, an incredibly solid DJ, and an amazing space to hang out. So day three in Montreal, it is ice and cold, rainy, and uh, I am sick and tired of riding a bike. Uh, it's the walking day. Let's go. I had much more planned for the third day. Unfortunately, I was just completely wiped out from the rain, riding all day. I, I don't ride my bike often, especially like this, and we're just going to get some juice at the orange julep. From where I was, we are only having to take one train, and that's from Laurier to Namur. And if you've never taken the Montreal Metro before, it is unbelievably gorgeous with beautiful works of art. And a neat fact about it, it goes deep because of the granite in the ground. Unfortunately, when you do get off at Narum, you're just greeted by car land, but it's a short walk. So that's it. I just literally came for a juice. Highly recommended uh, to me by a buddy of mine. And uh, definitely did not go wrong. So if you ever come to Montreal, this is, this is it. That's it, that's all, back to the subway. <laughs> and what kind of trip to Montreal would it be without going to old Montreal for a brief minute? Also known as Vieux mont -Ural. it's a historic district and it features charming cobblestone streets, well-preserved 17th and 18th century architecture, and a European feel. So now I'm here standing in old Montreal. A lot of it's just a bunch of tourist traps, but uh, you can't go wrong with all the, the abundance of architecture. So. Let's go take a walk through, see this beautiful place. While I'm sure some of the restaurants here are worthwhile, I would much rather find more local options. As once again, it is very tourist heavy here and it's catered for that. There's also a crazy amount of low quality souvenir shops. I would also say steer clear and find some amazing local businesses in the outlying neighborhoods. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more leaving a like, and potentially a comment with some recommendations. I really enjoy creating these videos, and I want to keep doing it. Until the next time.